Welcome to another unboxing from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm unboxing a game that I just received, but in fact it came out a couple of months ago uh, from White Dog Games. The game is called The Mission, and the subtitle, let me go ahead and pull the very cool looking cover up so you can see it, Early Christianity from the Crucifixion to the Crusades, a solitaire board game. So this game is designed by, by R. Ben Madison. There you can see that at the bottom. And it uses the system, States of Siege system, where you have six different paths emanating from a single point in this game. And we'll look at the map. In this game, it's emanating from Jerusalem. And as it says, it says it's, it's following the rise of Christianity from the time of Christ's crucifixion, his resurrection, and subsequent ascension into heaven to about the Crusades. I think it's 12 or 1300 AD. Um, so the game's going to start out where you, you know, you have the apostles who are going to move out on the paths, encountering pagans and others, other lands, converting them to Christianity. Then you're going to govern as the apostles leave. I think they turn to bishops. Then the bishops can become archbishops. But you're going to govern the church, try to fight off the barbarian hordes in the north, as well as jihad from the um, Muslims who ultimately will gain control of Jerusalem. I think it's sometime around turn 20 something, 21, 22. The game has 27 turns. So very cool looking game, very interesting. Not a war game, but it does have war elements in it. Very similar to the other states of siege style games. So you can see, I really like the cover. Um, very nice. I love the tone uh, and, and the, the cover and the colors used. Here's a look at the back. Um, here's some of the information. Solitaire suitability, obviously it's a nine. This is a solitaire game. Only allow, It's only made to be played solo. Uh, complexity is it? It is in the medium uh, range, and actually, when we go in the rule book, I'll show you this part that Ben talks about, where he says, "You know, this is a game you're actually going to want to read the rules first. A lot of times, these states of series siege series games, uh, they're they're fairly easy, so I kind of jump into them just following the player aid. But he recommends that you re read the rules before you play. Um, a game takes about four hours, it says. Once again, 27 turns, and each turn is fairly involved, uh, ages 12 plus. But this is another, <coughs> another one of White Dog's smaller solo games. I own about seven of them. Really enjoy these games. They're fun. They're immersive, easy to understand generally, have great components. They do have paper maps, and you can buy them in several different formats. You can buy a boxed version you can buy a folio version. You can buy a print and play version. I think they're very well done. So kudos to White Dog. And if you haven't, if you don't know who White Dog Games is, you have never experienced one of their games, you need to get one. They have about 20 or 25 solo games on all different types of periods. You need to get one and try it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open the box. These games are print on demand, so you're going to order it and probably get it within seven to ten days. They're pretty good. They ship, I think, from California. I think Blue Panther does their printing. Um, so you're going to get them pretty quickly. But I, I'd recommend you go ahead and order this one. This one looks really cool. First thing we're going to look at here is the rule book. Uh, not glossy. Fairly thick paper. And it's a very dense rule book. You can see there's a lot of writing in this rule book, but let me point out a couple of things. It is the, the, the type of style that we as wargamers like, case and text. So it has 7.0. That's going to translate directly to the player aid. I'll, I'll show you that here in a moment. But the other cool thing is important parts are in red. So for instance, you can see this three is highlighted in red because it, it wanted to point out that it was three. And then you'll notice there's little examples. There are tons of these examples in blue. You can see all over. So it's gonna, it's gonna ex explore a rule, explain it to you in writing, and then it's gonna give you an example 
of how it works. So pretty cool. Uh, nice, nice rule book. The rule book is 16 pages. The last page is designer notes. Actually, the last, I think, two pages. Yeah, basically the, the last couple of pages, sorry. The last page and a half, or yeah, page and a half is designer notes, which is kind of cool. You know, I, I enjoy reading those because it gives me insight into what the designer was thinking. But fairly easy to understand, but it is dense text. You're going to have to read this. You're going to have to pay attention to it. You're going to have to have this rule book out next to you as you play the game for at least your first couple of times. It, it always seems I need it out uh, for at least a couple of times. And then ultimately, I, I'm able to, to kind of go without it and just use uh, the player aid. Uh, the first thing here on top is what's called the counter tray. A lot of these games from White Dog, particularly by Ben Madison, have these counter trays. And you'll notice there are different boxes where you are literally going to take your counters. We'll look at the counters. You're going to punch them out. They don't need clipping. They're very nice counters. But you're going to stack those counters in this box for ease of access. And they've also got kind of a written explanation and a reminder of how many they are or what their symbols are. So you can place all, I think there's 170 counters in this game. So to keep them organized, you're gonna lay this out next to your board. You're gonna stack all your tiles in this upper section. And then you're gonna get those once you need them. Oh, I need a faith tile. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull those faith tiles out. I'm gonna put them in a draw cup because I think the field tiles, the wafers, the hearsays, and I think there's only three or four of them to start. And then the faith tiles, you're going to put in draw cups and you're going to draw them when they tell you. Uh, but yeah, you can see very nice, very good way to do that. It, it really helps you understand. Here, it's going to give an explanation of the different actual historical figures that are included. They're called the great theologians in the game. Here you can see Ignatius, uh, Athanasius, Gregory, Isaac of Nineveh, etc. John of Damascus. And they're going to tell you who they are, typically what they do, uh, and a little bit about them. Just gives a little history and information. This, this counter tray also con, uh, contains this ruler religion table for king and tyrant. You're going to roll some dice at that point of the game. And then you're going to put a king or a tyrant on the, on the throne. And then you'll have to have to deal with that. But that's a look at the counter tray. These are, they're cardstock, but they're not real thick cardstock. They wear very well. Um, I've played several games. Nubia, Jeff Davis, where they have these. And they, they, they never have a problem wearing out. You're not touching them a lot. Here is the handy dandy sequence of play. It is double sided. Um, on the back, it kind of talks about the factions. Once again, more information that's going to help you understand better the history uh, of the church over that thousand year period. Um, but here's the sequence of play. You're literally going to follow this. You can see it. one history phase 5.0 in the rule book. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. You're going to have to follow each of those steps. Then you go to the, the second phase the secular phase, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to follow those down until you get to the end of turn phase. I love this type of sequence of play, particularly in solitaire games. I like it to be printed out um, so that I can follow it or print it on the board or the map. And a lot of games do that as well. Here is the axe track. This is kind of your track, your turn track. Uh, you're going to have a marker. We'll look at it here in a minute. You're going to place it in these boxes and you're going to move them down. You can see turns are numbered to 27. So the 27th turn ends in 1094 AD. And you're literally going to move this box or the, the marker from box to box. And it's going to tell you what happens, historical events, certain uh, counters will be sitting in this box. Once you reach that box, you're going to take it like the monas. The, Mo the Montanist heresy, you're going to put that in that draw cup, and then that's going to be able to come up at that part of the game. So very well done, very laid out. It's color-coded, so this is kind of an age, the white, then you've got the yellow, the purple, uh, pink, or 
yeah, pink, green, etc. You're going to follow those. Um, very well done. Keeps you organized. Keeps you um, in tune with what's going on in the game. On with the game. So very well done there in the on that axe track. Here also is a setup sheet. It's double sided, which is nice because you can literally use this to set the game up. And then you can put it back in the box and don't have to worry about it. There are two different scenarios in this game. You can see here's the campaign game, which goes over the entire 27 turn uh, game. And then you've got the shorter scenario, which is just the rise of Islam. It's seven turns. So here it's going to tell you exactly how to set the game up. You're going to take these pieces, put them in this area, your solidus or money, uh, etc. Blah, blah, blah. This is what you do. So very, very nice. So that's another thing about the game. They have the campaign game and then they have a shorter scenario. Typically, these, these games have that. Um, but I think the first game, the campaign game, includes all of it. So you're going to literally go from the apostles, moving out from Jerusalem, converting lands, discovering lands, converting them, and then trying to establish churches. And then the second half of the game is where the barbarian hordes appear in the north. We'll look at the map. And uh, the jihad starts, the Muslims kind of attack you from the inside out. So there's two different kind of phases to this game, a buildup and then a survival. Let's go ahead and take a look at the counter sheet. I've got that on the back. Let me turn that upside. Very nice looking counter sheet. They're always very well done. Um, all different types of tiles. These are the field tiles. And let me punch one out for you and show you. So on the back of these field tiles, and these are going to be set up in different areas. This is the pagan symbol, the sun. It's going to tell you what you have to overcome to convert this. So you have to overcome a four. And these are die rolls. You get different modifiers. Conversion attempts, you can get, if you have a Bible in the region, we'll talk a little bit about that. You get one free conversion attempt, or you can use your apostles or bishops or archbishops. Um, once they're converted, they are flipped over to their their Christian side. And you can see there's a little church there in the upper left, and it, uh, it, it marks that that's friendly to you. So you can see there's a whole bunch of those on this counter sheet. Let me put that back in. I'm not ready necessarily to... Um, you also have some different kinds of tiles. You have you know, here's your, your different leaders, your bishops. Here's the king. Remember, we talked about the king. These are pieces that are kind of in papal states are in thing. This is a self-defense. It doesn't have an attack value, but it meaning it can't move out and attack, but it can defend itself. Solidus is your money marker. Um, Roman capital. You're ultimately going to control the Roman Empire once Constantine takes over and uh, Christianity becomes the religion of the state, you're going to be able to use the Roman armies. Here you can see the, the Roman army tile to move out and attack the barbarians and protect the Christians. Here's a bunch of the different leaders I mentioned. You know, the Pope with the mitre showing there. Bishop has the crosses on them. King has the, has the crown. These are your different leaders. And then uh, these are the different people that you're trying, trying to convert. On the other side of the coin, these are the uh, the wafer tiles. The wafer tiles. Let me let me punch one out to kind of show you. And I think it's wafer tiles because isn't that what Eucharist is and the sacrament? You you eat a wafer, so that that's what Ben is trying to say here. These wafer tiles are double sided, and I should have flipped that over and shown you. On one side, you're going to see that it has a coin either a silver coin or a gold coin, I think they're worth, it, it doesn't change the value, the number determines the value. So you're going to gain $4 that turn. You use dollars to move your armies, um, to do uh, conversion attempts, etc. You have an infrastructure. You can also build things like monasteries and churches that will help you, uh, hospitals as well will help your soldiers recover. I'll show you where are the mark? Anyway, you get the money. The backside of the wafer tile, if you've played Jeff Davis, you're familiar with these. 
It's kind of a segmented tile that shows you different things that are going to happen using symbols. You'll notice on this tile, this is a early game tile. Uh, it's going to, that's a heresy symbol. So you're going to literally draw a heresy out. And then the other three quadrants are blank. Let me go ahead and show you one that's a little more involved. Here, I'll punch this one out. So yeah, here's a, a I think it's it's a later game. Um, you're gonna get four dollars. I'm not sure. I don't remember what the red circle is. I have not played this yet, obviously. But there you can see the difference on the back of the wafer tile. There's a heresy, and there's different movements on the in the different areas. You're gonna activate different things. So you're gonna have those in a draw cup, and you're gonna use those. You can see there's a whole bunch of different ones there. And then here you've got different markers for different events. Here's the infrastructure that I was talking about. There's only two of each, a university, a hospital, and a monastery. You're going to use those to uh, you know, aid your troops, aid your conversion attempts, um, etc. So uh, Bibles, you'll notice there are five different Bibles. Once these Bibles become available... You place them on the tracks, and you can do every turn a free conversion attempt. And then here on the back, you can see here's the flip side of those Bibles they say used. So you can use those for free conversion attempts, and then you flip them over. There's some more of the tiles. There's some heresies. I, I'm not sure exactly what, what's going to happen there. You can see these orange tiles these are your starting apostles. You've got Peter, Paul, Jude, Mark, Thomas, and Barnabas, James the Just, and then you've got some Persian markers. I think that just marks that the Persian Empire is there. Uh, but those are your guys that you're going to use at the beginning. Um, once they die, they become a relic. Sorry. You can see there's a bone symbol and they become a relic. Um, that gives you an advantage. So you can see there's a, a lot here, a lot of different elements, but overall the game, these games are not overly complex, although this one is marked as a five on the scale, mainly because it's more involved than the normal game. Uh, but very nice looking counters. They are laser die, die cut. They are very thick and they don't need clipping. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Let me move the, let me move the box over. I'll lay that out so you can see that I think you can get a good look at let me let me straighten that up a little bit. Beautiful beautiful map. It is paper. There are fold marks on it. I use a piece of plexi and I just cover these up. It flattens them out really well and and you can play on them. Um, but you can see be beautiful map. Let me move it up there. It's got an old look and feel. It's the way it was printed. Very well done, very thematic. I really like it. Um, here you can see, remember the States of Siege or Tower Defense. You've got Jerusalem in the center, and you'll notice there are six different paths that go out from each one of those. Here you've got kind of uh, Nubia and Ethiopia. That's the Nubian Egypt track. And if you watched my review of Nubia, you know that they were Christian for a long, long time. In fact, they were Christian longer than many other uh, normal areas in in this part of the world. Um, ultimately, they, they, they became destroyed by Muslims as well. But that's one track, kind of that Egyptian or Coptic faith track. It's written right there. Uh, that's one. Here you've got an Eastern... Uh, Asian track, Syrian track there going up. Here to the west, you've got an, a North African track, kind of in the purple. It ultimately ends in Tingatana and Numidia. Carthage as well is included in there. It's purple. Then you've got the Latin track uh, going up to England, the Saxons. You've got the Greek faith track going up there to the Bulgars. Kiev, the Danube Valley, Constantinople, that's blue. You've got the Armenian faith track, Antioch, Albania, 
uh, Georgia, Alania, that's kind of a rusty red color, and then that Asian track there in green. So you can see those are the six different tracks. You'll also notice about the map, each of those tracks have a die symbol. So there the uh, Egyptian Coptic faith track has a five on it. That identifies what number, and those numbers are going to correspond to die rolls as well as potentially events uh, that happen, and you're going to play certain things on those tracks. Here you've got a Bible translation box, um, Roman policy. Those are things that I, I didn't talk about, but they're things that you're going to try to manipulate to your advantage. Active wafer. You're going to draw those wafer tiles. You're going to put it down there to remind you what's going on. You've got your money track and your time track here. Um, Solidus is the money. Uh, the money, I think, of the Byzantine Empire is what it was called. So you're going to track your money down there. Damaged armies, Arab attack rolls. So uh, it's going to move up there. You can see different things like Persian religion. You'll notice there's a fire on that track. That's going to be a... a, a an event that happens and it's going to fight against your efforts to convert cities. There are dotted lines on the board um, that connect certain boxes like Gaul and Milan. Uh, those are explained in the rules. I don't know that I need to go, go through it. But really, once again, you're going to start in the center. You're going to move out on these different tracks trying to convert and build cities and other infrastructure. And then you're going to have to resist as from the center, the Muslims are going to attack you and, and try to beat you. Um, at the end of the game, you're going to compare your results to a table. You're going to score victory points, and it's going to say, here, let's go. You know, oh, you had a you had a major victory or a minor victory or a crushing defeat, etc. Uh, I'm not finding it in the rule book, but you know, that that's kind of the way that works. And you know, really a cool game. Sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Really a very cool game. Very neat concept. I love these States of Siege series games, frankly. I, I've always enjoyed them. I have a good time with them. Some people complain that, oh, they're, they're very deterministic. They're very regimented. And there's not a lot of, of ability to make decisions. I don't find that true. You always have to make a decision every round. How do I spend my limited resources? Which track or path is most threatening to me? I need to focus on that, or I might need to focus on two tracks. You also want to try to gradually get out on all of the tracks. You can't ignore them. So to me, there's a lot of choices. This game seems to throw in a lot of additional elements. So I think there's a lot more to the game here. There's a lot more depth. Um... So maybe this is one, not necessarily a war game, but I'm going to tell you this is a very cool looking game. I'm very excited. Just got this a couple of days ago. I wanted to unbox it today so that I can play it uh, and at least get an initial play in so I can start formulating my thoughts on, on a video review. Uh, so there you have it. The Mission from White Dog Games, designed by Ben Madison. One of their, I think it's their newest title, came out a couple of months ago. I just got my hands on a copy Looking forward to playing it. So I've been Grant for the Player's Aid. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I hope that 2021, in fact, this is the first video that I shot of 2021. I hope 2021 is a better year for all of us. And we can ultimately get back to normalcy in life and work and church, uh, social settings, as well as gaming. I want to get back to playing regularly with Alexander and going to conventions. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll, we'll, We'll do more of these, so check those out. Thank you.